The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBM Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. The greatest problem in all of human life is what Professor Eric Erickson of Harvard University called the identity crisis. When you ask and answer the burning question, the flaming question, who am I? Who are you? Where did you come from? Why are you here? Where are you going? Are you a mere microbe in the mud? An android amoeba that made good an evolved paramecium with personality but no purpose? Did a wisp of swamp gas waft through a mound of moist moss millions of years ago and the ensuing chemical reaction eventuated in clams, frogs, leaping lizards, lemurs, monkeys, Neanderthals, and you, but without any higher reason for it at all? Are you but an evolutionary accident, an historic happenstance, a random result of seawater and sludge, a biped, upright, humanoid, salamander-wearing socks, sneakers, and a necktie on Sundays, but with no cosmic destiny, no transcendental value? Is that all you are? You certainly can't think I would ask a rhetorical question as odd as that, then answer yes. Of course not. You are not just a higher animal, an orangutan with a vocabulary, a hyperthyroid rhesus monkey with the ability to reason, a dwarf gorilla with a high school diploma, or a giant chimp with a driver's license. You are neither a fallen angel nor a risen ape. You are an infinitely valuable son or daughter of the living God. That is who and what and why. You are alive. Whatever else you may have ever heard about the origin and destiny of humankind, consider this possible and plausible explanation. That the supreme being of all this universe of universes, the majestic mind at the center of all things and beings, set in motion a process of creation in which the galaxies, suns, and planets evolved innumerable forms of plant and animal life as the paleontological fossil record clearly reveals, but that the crowning triumph of God's creation is humankind, free will, mortal existence, rational, reasoning sons and daughters of God, who by the faintest flicker of faith can actually choose to do and to live the will and the purposes of their Creator, and choose to live in goodness, truth, and beauty, and in love, for mankind and their maker. That is who, what, and why you are. You are a child of God. And unless and until you really recognize that truth and begin to live it and act upon it and actualize it in your day-by-day -day experience, you will never be fully happy and fulfilled as a human being because you were created for this, for this spiritual way of life, and you can never be truly content until you begin to live that way. You say that some people seem to be perpetually discontented. Some people can ask a question, then answer their own question, then go away mad with the answer that they gave. Then there was a repairman I once met who said, I can fix anything, but if I can't fix something, I can fix it so nobody else can fix it. Negative egocentricity is both disruptive and destructive but a more affirmative approach can transform situations. A waitress up here in the Sierra Mountains in a Yosemite cafe who displayed a particularly cheerful demeanor as she went about her tasks told me her secret was to pace herself. She said, one of my slogans that I keep in mind is pace yourself. And she explained that the word pace, P-A-C-E, stood for or spelled positive attitudes change everything. Positive attitudes change everything. They do. And the most positive possible source of all positive attitudes is living faith in the living God. God can change your negative attitudes to positive attitudes, and positive attitudes change everything. Because a trouble in life or a problem or a difficulty is like a hill lying just ahead of you as you're driving along a road the hill will straighten itself out 
the closer that you come to it. It flattens as you approach it. However high and impassable it may have seemed at the first, similarly, keep advancing on a problem or a difficulty in your life with faith, and eventually you will discover that you have traversed it. One prize fighter said you'll be a winner as long as you always get up one more time than you get knocked down. Persist, endure, but above all, have faith, because the power of God is transformative in your life. Jesus said these four powerful, life-transforming words. Listen to them. Have faith in God. Those four words. Have faith faith in God. He said, fear not, be not anxious, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Have faith in God. Place your trust in God, the universal Father who loves you with an infinite love, and the power of God is transformative. Prayer changes things because prayer changes people, and people change things. Positive attitudes change everything. Pace yourself. And God can grant you a more positive attitude if in faith you will claim it. Jesus once rebuked his followers, saying, O oh, you of little faith, ye of little faith. And he said, If you will but have faith as a grain of mustard seed. In other words, just a tiny little bit of faith. You will be able to move mountains of material difficulty in your life and emerge with a spiritual victory. An angry, bitter, hateful person goes through life spewing spiritual toxic waste into the atmosphere. Your grim, dour, and doubtful attitude not only affects you and the way you feel and think, act, and react, it also affects everybody else around you, the way they think, feel, and act, and react. Your attitude makes that much difference. Jesus' very watchword was, be of good cheer. In other words, cheer up. Be not anxious. Be not filled with fear and dread and anxiety. But trust your life to God. Trust your future to God. You may not know what the future holds, but you can know who holds your future. The living God, your Father and your friend, who created you for a joyous, meaningful, and purposeful future, whatever it may contain. You may say, but I face so many problems, so many difficulties, perplexities, seemingly insurmountable situations in my life. There are essentially two alternative ways of facing any problem. You can either attempt to convince yourself psychologically in your own mind that the problem really isn't so bad after all, or even that it doesn't even exist, deny it, then do nothing about it, or you can undertake to deal with with that problem intelligently and vigorously. Suppose you had a wristwatch that had stopped. It didn't run. You'd beat on it. You'd put it under hot and cold running water. You left it out in the sun. You put it in the refrigerator. Anything you could to start this watch going again, but all to no avail. At that point, you could psychologically rationalize. You could go into denial. You could tell yourself and convince yourself that at least two times a day this watch is right. At least twice in every 24 hours, this watch is correct and keep right on wearing it. Or you could choose the other alternative and actually deal with it and actually get it fixed. Do something about it. That is the very choice which confronts you this moment, this hour, this week of your life. That same alternative with unfathomable consistency. Some human beings prefer to imagine that problems do not exist rather than striving forthrightly to solve them. Because the first step is to face your problem head on, then recognize that as a son or daughter of the living God, you were created to be able to deal with difficulties, both with courage and even with gladness, seeing them as challenges, beholding them as tasks set before you as part of the actualization, part of the building of the kingdom of God upon this earth. It is a process, a continual process of problem solving, but not alone, never alone, for everything you face in this life, through the years, through the decades, until finally you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will walk with God at your side 
and God will take you from the valley of the shadow to the spacious spans of eternity, eternal life in this great universe. Said Jesus, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to make, to prepare a place for you. What a tremendous philosophy of life and philosophy of death, and then again philosophy of life, of eternal life, of new life, of life beyond the grave, so that you live fearless of life and fearless of death as the son or daughter of God you were born to be, as a member in the worldwide universal family of God. And faith in God is an antibiotic to bitterness, an antidote to fear and faint-heartedness, a vaccination against vacillation, an inoculation against indifference and indolence. It will infuse your mind and your soul with high purpose and with spiritual vigor. When you align and synchronize your mind and your thinking with the mind, the thinking, the plans, and the purposes of the very God who created it all and who created you, and who has a wonderful will for the living of your life here on this earth and a wonderful will for the living of your eternal life. If in this very moment you will dedicate or rededicate your life to the living God who gave you your life originally. Do that here and now, a simple moment of faith, a simple prayer, honestly and sincerely, that you give your life and will to God and all things, all things, will become as new for you. For free literature on the spiritual life, material which I have written on these very topics, if you feel that divine discontent, that inward spiritual restlessness, yearning for a finding and knowing of God, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. I've written some free literature on finding God, getting to know God, growing spiritually, seven principles of prayer, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the spiritual truth which rings down through the corridors of human history that this entire world was intended and created to live as one family of love, the family of God, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, and you are an infinitely valuable son or daughter of this living God in this great far-flung universal family of God. If you're intrigued by this truth, if that rings some sort of celestial bell inside your soul when I speak it into this radio microphone, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.